Hey everyone, Ilda here from I Love Doing All Things Crafty and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about rainbows and I will be sharing over 10 ways to add them to your cards. This is a collaboration video to celebrate It's Me JD's 50,000 subscribers and is part of a YouTube hop, so you'll know there will be an awesome giveaway. Make sure you keep watching for more details on how to enter. Here's a list of rainbow techniques I've used throughout the video and timeline points in case you want to refer to them later. So let's get started as I have lots to share with you today. For the first example, I will be using a stencil. This is an older stencil from Studio Katia. It is the Mandela stencil. This is a very intricate stencil with lots of great detail. Here I'm using Strathmore bristle paper and adding some tape to secure the stencil in place. My go-to inks for ink blending are Distress Oxide inks. They blend like butter on a smooth surface like this. I also like to use the life-changing blender brushes from Picket Fence Studios, especially when using an intricate stencil like this. The foam blending pads tend to catch on the edges, making it more difficult to get a good transfer. So here I'm starting off with candied apple in the center and then moving out in rainbow order from the middle, I will blend out the rest of the colors. I'm not sure if you notice, but I'm using the same brush for a few of the colors. Only when I do switch to a darker color will I switch to a different brush. This is just a little time saver and if you don't have um, all of the blending brushes, uh, this is a good tip and trick to use. So now I have a smaller, more detailed brush. And as you can see, the stencil is starting to lift. So I'm just gonna grab a tissue and hold it in place. And this will keep my fingers clean and it'll keep the stencil from moving around so I get a better blend. And I'll just finish blending out the background, going in rainbow order, blending into the previous color to create a smooth transition between colors. And that's pretty much how I would add the colors of the rainbow to a background using a stencil. The best part of using a stencil is always the reveal. And here's the finished card I created using the stenciled rainbow background. So as you can see, I trimmed the design in half and added it to the top and bottom of the card base, leaving a space in the center for the sentiment. For my next example, I'm going to show you how to use three Distress Oxide inks to blend out a rainbow background. For those of you that don't have all of the Distress Oxide inks, all you need is a pink, a yellow, and a blue to create a rainbow colored background. For this card, I'm using the Picked Raspberry, the Mustard Seed, and the Salty Ocean Distress Oxide inks. So here I've added the mustard seed first to the center and then I'm going to add my picked raspberry on one side and then blending the two inks together to great, create my orange colors and then I will flip my cardstock piece over and um, blend out the salty ocean to the other edge to create um, the blue, the green and then I will flip the cardstock piece over again and add purple or pink to the end to create the purple color. This is a great option to achieving a rainbow blended background without having to pull out all your Distress Oxide ink colors. And here's the card I created using the rainbow blended background. I used the Honeybee Stamps large polka dot stencil and added glimmer paste for extra sparkle and shine. For this next technique, I'm going to take advantage of all that ink that was left on my craft mat and use it to do some ink smushing. So I have spritzed the ink with some water and then just pushed my watercolor paper into the ink and then I'm just using a heat gun to dry in between. And as you just saw there, I used a paper towel to pick up any color that starts to get muddied on the mat before picking up any more color with the paper. And I'll just keep smushing the paper into the mat, picking up color until I'm satisfied with the coverage on the background. And here's my finished card for the smooshed ink background example. For this cute little shaker balloon, I sandwiched some confetti between a vellum layer and a cardstock piece. And then I just stamped the bottom using a sentiment from the Studio Katya birthday greeting set. For this next rainbow card example, it's probably self-explanatory. I'm just taking a whole bunch of cardstock scrap pieces that I have and then just cutting them to quarter inch strips. And then all I'm going to do is glue them in rainbow order to my card panel. This is probably the easiest card um, or rainbow card technique that I'll be sharing today. 
For this card, I just used one strip of each color, but you could keep on going and create a whole entire panel with rainbow colors. Just keep repeating in rainbow order. You could also mix up different widths of the strips to change the design of the rainbow. This is a great way to use up all of your colorful cardstock scraps and create quick rainbow card backgrounds. And here's the finished card I created using the paper strips. To it, I also glued tiny glitter strips along the edge of the rainbow, added a few jewels, and stamped out my sentiments from the friendship set from Honeybee Stamps. For the next few card examples, I will be using a couple of different coloring mediums to add color to my card backgrounds. Here I'm using Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens to add color to the stamp from Picket Fence Studios. The stamp is called the Circles of Faith that I had stamped in Versifying Black Onyx ink and then I heat set it with a clear embossing powder. So as you saw, I started with the center circle and then all I'm doing is loosely applying the color in rainbow order a few rings at a time and then I'm using a water brush to blend out the color and also slightly blending out the two adjacent colors to give it that soft blend and transition well to the next color. Throughout the video I'll be using lots of products from various companies so make sure you check out the video description below for more details plus I will also link to my blog post below where I will have written information on each of the cards that I have created here today. If you have any questions for me leave them in the comment section below and I'll make sure to answer them. Also I'd love to hear your favorite ways of adding a rainbow to your cards. And here's the finished look at the card I created using the rainbow rings of faith I just finished coloring. I also colored these cute images from the I'm a Hugger set in rainbow themed using Copic markers. Which leads into my next card example where I use Copic markers to color in die cut paper pieces rather than using colored cardstock. By die cutting your paper pieces in white and then coloring it in, not only do you save on time, but you also save on cardstock. I would have had to split the die and run it through the die cut machine six different times with each descending rainbow color, or run the die as it is three times and have extra colored pieces, which most likely I would end up discarding. I like to use the negative of a die cut to hold the die cut pieces in place. This also helps keep my fingers from getting all stained. So here's a look at the finished rainbow card. These stamps and dies come from the Rainbow Wishes set from Honeybee Stamps and that gorgeous sparkle comes from Ink on 3's liquid pixie dust that I applied with a water brush to the clouds and the rainbow. For this next card I'm using a stencil again to add a foil transferred rainbow. This is a super easy way to add a rainbow to a card without a lot of work. I began by applying Deco Foil Transfer Gel to my cardstock piece using the Radiant Background Stencil from Honeybee Stamps. The hardest part about making this card is waiting for the gel to dry. Once the gel is dry and it's clear, you can run it through a laminator or a foil machine if you have one. Now that the gel is dry, all I'm going to do is add a sheet of rainbow foil to the cardstock panel. Just make sure you have the shiny side of the foil facing up. Now I'm just going to use a scratch piece of paper to create a sleeve so I can run my pieces together through the laminator. You'll want to make sure your laminator is nice and hot before running it through. I had this one set on 3 mils and it just needed one pass through. In hindsight I should have cut that extra piece of foil off before running it through the machine as it did crinkle up a bit but I could still use that piece again next time. You'll want to make sure you let the foil completely cool before pulling it off. Once it's cool, the gel is no longer sticky and the foil should have completely transferred. You can always run it again through the machine if you've missed any spots. I just love how easy this technique was to do and the results are gorgeous, especially in person with all the reflection of the foil. Here is my finished card using this gorgeous radiant rainbow background and all I did was cut a circle from the center and finish it with some sentiments from Honeybee Stamps. 
For the next two rainbow card creations, I'm going to be doing some stamping using this large Mandela stamp from Honeybee Stamps. I'm going to start by doing some first generation stamping and then some second generation stamping with the ink left behind on the stamp. Here once again I'm using Distress Oxide inks and only in three colors. I started again by using mustard seed in the center and then I stamped pink picked raspberry to the top to create the orange in between the two colors and then I'm st stamping salty ocean on the bottom and then blending that out with the mustard seed to create the green color. So as you can see I just keep adding pigment to the areas that I think need a little more blending by using the edge of my ink pad so to avoid contaminating it with another color. But really most of the ink is stamped off anyways when you stamp it onto the paper. If you want to stamp out a design in rainbow colors and you're not using a rainbow pad, you definitely should be using a stamp positioning tool as you'll want to re-stamp the same areas until you're satisfied with the color blend. Since Distress Oxides take a while to dry, I'm going to speed things up by adding some clear embossing powder. Here I'm using Crystal Clear Ultra Fine Embossing Powder from Ink on 3 and then I'm just going to use my heat tool to heat set the lines to give it a glossy finish. For the next rainbow background, I don't want to let the ink on the stamp go to waste. So before I stamp it out and do the second generation stamping, I'm going to give it a light mist. In the previous card, I used Nina Solar White paper, but since I'm using water this time, I switched to using bristle paper as it absorbs water better. So let's take a look at the two rainbow cards I stamped out. The colors on this first card are super vibrant and intense, probably even more so because of the clear embossing powder. And on the second card, you can see that the colors are much paler, but just as pretty. It almost looks like some of the lines have been watercolored. For my next rainbow card, I'm using alcohol inks. I think this may be my most favorite card from all the cards I share today, partially because I had so much fun playing with the alcohol inks and watching the movement of the pigment flow on the paper. It had been a little while since I had played with my alcohol inks, um, so I did get a little carried away when I added my blending solution to the paper. If you haven't played with these inks yet, I would definitely recommend trying them out. They are unlike anything else you've played with. They are so much fun. Plus, if you like rainbows, this is such an easy way to create a colorful rainbow background. So here I'm just blowing air through a straw onto the surface to move the colors around. This just lets me have a little more control of where I want the colors to move. So while you're watching me play with these alcohol inks, I'm just gonna talk a little more about this video hop and giveaway. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this is a celebration video hop as JD has reached 50,000 subscribers. I'm super happy for JD's achievement, so if you aren't following her yet, make sure you do because she's super funny and shares tons of great crafting and card making tips. Check the video description below for your next stop on the video hop and make sure you leave a comment by June 10th of 2019 to be entered in this giveaway. I will be choosing one winner from all the comments left here on my YouTube channel, so just let me know what you liked about this video, what your favorite technique was, because I always love to hear your feedback. The giveaway is open to US residents only, but for those of you that are international, make sure you hop on over to It's Me JD's YouTube channel and leave a comment over there as she will be giving away two gift certificates to her international followers. Winners will be announced on the It's Me JD blog no later than June 14th. 2019. For details on the prizes, the official hop list, rules, and more information, visit It's Me JD's blog. I will have that link below in the video description as well. All right, so back to this alcohol ink background. While the ink is still wet, especially where the ink has pooled, I'm just laying a piece of gold foil and burnishing it a little bit with my hand, pressing it into those areas. The stickiness from the wet ink will grab onto the gold foil, releasing it and leaving behind this beautiful gold leaf finish. I absolutely love how this one turned out. All I did on this card was cut it at a diagonal and then add it to my card base, leaving a gap for the sentiment to be stamped, which come from Ink on 3's Magical Unicorn set. For this next card example, the crystal jewels are what will be creating the colors of the rainbow. Here I have what will be the front of my card with a die cut star on the top half of the panel that I have traced onto the card base. Now all I'm doing is adding a little bit of glue and starting at one point of the star, I'm dropping jewels into the wet glue. I just eyeball the spaces, but you can mark out yours depending on how many colors you want to add. 
The outline of the star is just a guide, but you can go a little bit outside of the lines because once you add the top card or the panel to the top of it, all you'll see is what pokes through the opening of the star cutout. This is a little time consuming, but the results are so pretty. The other thing that will help is having a good pick me up tool. I found that the jewel picker lost its tack, so I switched to this pick me up tool from Silhouette. These crystals I used come from Studio Katya, and as you can see, I've mixed and matched different sizes and types and just cut, kept to the same color family. I really love how this car turned out. It's clean, it's simple, it's shiny, it's so pretty. All right, here is my last and final card example of adding a rainbow to your card. This time I'm using embossing paste or you can use texture paste, the results will be similar. And for the purpose of this video, I have already added my texture paste to that card panel. And now that it's nice and dry, all I'm going to do is use the same stencil and line it up as best as possible. I think the way I'm going to show you of adding color to embossing paste is easier than the traditional mixing of the pigment into the paste and then applying it to the stencil one color at a time. Plus, I think this method allows for more control of the color and it is way less messier. So now all I'm doing is applying one color at a time in rainbow order and then I'm going to go back and forth and make sure that I blend out in between so that there is a smooth transition between colors. At this point, I'm repositioning the stencil a little bit because I did notice there was a little gap. So just make sure you take your time and do your best to align your stencil to get the best results possible. I hope today's video was informative and hopefully you picked up on some tips and tricks on how to add rainbows to your cards. I know I've shared over 10 ways to do this, but there are so many more and I hope I didn't overwhelm you with all the cards I've created today. I did get a little bit carried away, but that's how I get when I get inspired, especially when there are rainbows involved. Once again, I'd like to thank JD for inviting me to join her on this collaboration and congratulate her for her huge accomplishment on reaching 50,000 subscribers. Make sure you hop along and check out all of the rest of the talented ladies that have joined us on this hop. I am a huge fan of their work and I know you will be inspired by them all as well. So now it's time for the reveal. How pretty is that? Here's a look at the finished card that I used the embossed rainbow background. I have turned it into a rain shaker card that was inspired by my friend Laura Devallo, who is a master at interactive cards. I'm hoping to have a process video for this card done soon and if I do I will have that link below as well. Thank you all for stopping by or hopping by and spending some time with me today. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel for future inspirations and until next time everyone, happy crafting! Bye!